all times are filled with immense uncertainty. There's never been a time in history ever that ever had certainty, ever. And so I find it funny when people say during these uncertain times, nothing like all time is uncertain. And so the question is, is how does one enjoy uncertain times? Um, and what questions do you raise? And so I think asking questions like, um, um, uh, what good will come from this decision? Or how long will this decision last? Uh, these are the things that I think are important, which is, are we prepared for the definite uncertainty? Um, do we have insurance? Do we have savings? Are we taking care of our people? You know, are we taking care of our families? Are we taking care of our community? You cannot judge the quality of a crew by how a ship performs in calm waters. You can only judge the quality of a crew by how a ship performs in rough waters. In fact, very often we actually don't know the strength of a team or a family or a community until there are rough waters. We actually don't know how good our culture is until we face uh, a crisis. And so the question is, are you laying a foundation um, that is more likely to produce a team or a group of people or a community that will come together rather than abandon and save themselves? Um, and so asking yourselves this question, going uh, with, with the complete understanding that all time is uncertain and how do we guard, guard for the future? Um, you know, the best companies save money. The best companies in the, in the good times don't distribute all the money away for bonuses, you know, but they, see, they save a lot so that when those hard times come, they're flush with cash to take care of uh, people so, to manage through, uh, through the hard times. The problem with that concept is it has the word back in it. You know, there's no going backwards ever. Um, and life, politics, culture, technology, uh, tastes change with time. They evolve. Um, you, you know, and, 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 and especially um, things like a pandemic, like a global pandemic, of course they're going to change who we are. Um, you know, the people who went into the Second World War were not the people who came out of the Second World War and there was no going back. Um, and, and we're the same. What I'm fascinated by is how it'll affect young people. I think for older people, we'll go back into some of our old habits, even though new ones may have been formed. Um, but if you think about it, kids who grew up during the Depression or during, during the war, for example, you know, our, many of our grandparents uh, or parents if, uh, uh, you know, who lived through those times, for the rest of their lives, they were frugal and miserly. Well, there's nothing wrong with them. It's because they lived through the Depression. You know, they lived through, the, so they, they, they saved every, they continue to save every jam jar and reuse every piece of tinfoil, you know? Um, it, it, and it's the same. Like, I'm fascinated by kids who went through the pandemic during these formative years, um, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, what strange habits they will cling on to for the rest of their lives. There's no way to know, and, and you know, for the next 10 or 20 years, um, that their grandkids will make fun of them for something that they do that was formed now. There is liability associated with, you know, that kids who are supposed to be social who weren't social, um, you know, w will they be more shy? Will they be more afraid? I mean, we've seen this happen with kids who are just you know, who, are, who have their heads down on their phones and become addicted to technology that, you know, I, I know somebody who, their teenagers afraid of answering the front door because there might be a stranger there, you know? Um, you know. So who knows? And I think we have to be aware of it so that we can, we can uh, compensate as best we can for the socialization. But there might be new skills. Perhaps they'll be better at reading someone's emotions just from their eyes because they haven't had the benefit of their mouth, you know, and their expressions. Uh, so who knows what, what they, they may become may, way more sophisticated and, and better at making eye contact. A creative type, an infinite minded thinker, embraces uncertainty and surprise and finds opportunity in the unknown. Um, the sort of finite mindedness um, fears uncertainty and surprise. And, uh, and, and I, so when you ask me what does creativity look like in a, in a social setting, trying to go recreate what was um, in a new world is not creativity. You know, trying to do just the way we did things but online 
is not creativity. Um, saying, okay, let's pretend we're starting from scratch. This is how the world works now. There's a larger online dimension which we never had. Um, there are new things that we have to guard for and against. Um, uh, how, if we were starting from scratch, what would it look like? Um, and I think that's where creativity um, uh, can be ignited, um, which is we, are, we don't feel limited by the way we used to do things, nor do we feel a pressure to recreate the way we did things. There may be great things from the past that we want to bring along with us, but there may be some stuff that we want to let go of as well. This is that opportunity. Um, and I think a lack of creativity is, is just trying to cling on, cling on to the past. Um, you know, we don't want to put these organizations in formaldehyde where we simply try and preserve what was. We, we, whether, it, whether with or without a global pandemic, as I said before, you know, times change, technology change, culture changes, politics change, tastes change. And so any organization that wants to stay relevant has to adapt with the times. Um, you know, things like a pandemic or any other kind of uh, stress or chaos um, maybe expedite that.